Hi, in this video we're going to talk about some functions and moments in the, in the continuous case. Uh, in the previous video we were in a discrete case and what we're going to see in the continuous case is the functions are going to be defined the same way, but we, I've got to show you how to, how to perform the calculations. It's pretty neat, I think, so I uh, hope you'll agree after you see this. So let's talk about the discrete case uh, again first. So remember in the discrete case, discrete random variable just means you can list out the values in the, in the random variable. And we had a probability mass function that's defined just to be the point mass at each value. So P sub K is just the probability that the random variable is equal to K. And we could have used function notation if we wanted to and written this as just a, uh, just using function notation as a F sub cap N of K being the probability that cap N is equal to K. So sometimes you'll see the P sub K notation and sometimes you'll see the function notation. Now with continuous random variables though, we're going to use the function notation and the function that we're going to be talking about first is what's called the probability density function. Sometimes I just call this the density function. Uh, if I do, the word probability is implied and you'll also hear this referred to as the PDF. And so what's neat about this is that the, the, in the continuous case, we can graph the random vari uh, graph the, the function, the, the density function. We have a continuous graph. And so we might have a graph that looks something like this. I just kind of made it up. And this density function, what's neat is this density function is defined in such a way that the area under the curve of the density function is one. The density function will always be a, a positive function in, in the sense that it lies above the x-axis and the area under the curve between the, the function and the x-axis uh, will be one. And not only that, and this is the neat part, is that it's defined in such a way that if you have an interval of values, say from A to B, then we can calculate the probability that the random variable is between those two values by taking the area under the curve from A to B. Now the area under the curve over the entire support of the random variable is one, and so of course the area under the curve from A to B will be some number less than one, and the, the density function is defined in such a way that that area under the curve from A to B is exactly what the probability is that the random variable will be between A and B. And so that's, that's pretty neat. And of course you know from calculus that uh, when we're talking about areas under the curve, we're talking about integration. And so when we calculate the probability that the random variable is between A and B, we're integrating, we, we calculate that value by integrating over the interval from A to B of the density function. Now, uh, I'm going to make a little uh, comment here, uh, some little subtle, in the next few slides are going to be very subtle changes to this slide. So in this slide, I look, uh, I'm looking at, uh, let's look at the probability equation there, or the expression for the probability, the first, the first expression, well, actually both expressions for the probability. Look at the inequality, it's a strict inequality on A and B, so uh, a strictly less than symbol. I'm going to change that to a, uh, on, the, on the first less than, I'm going to change that to a less than or equal to, and look what that does on my graph. Uh, I'll back up and show you uh, what it does on my graph. I, when I didn't have the less than or equal to, I just had a dotted line above A because you weren't including A. Now that I'm including A, I just put the solid line. But of course, that's not going to affect the area. And so the area under the curve from A to B is not going to depend on whether you're including, a, whether you're not including the A value on the inequality or whether you are including the A value on the inequality. You're still going to get the same value. Same thing with, with uh, including or not including B, the B value. So right here now I've included the B value. Uh, so I've got a solid line above B. But of course, that's, uh, it's not going to affect that, the area under the curve over the interval from A to B. And I could include both endpoints if I like. So my point here is that to calculate the probability that the random variable is between A and B, it doesn't matter whether you're including the endpoints A or B or not. It, that doesn't matter. And, and, and furthermore, the value of that probability is going to be the integral from A to B of uh, the density function. You're going to integrate the density function and evaluate over the interval from A to B and evaluate that, that definite integral. Now, a, a kind of a, a corollary of this, kind of a... Um, what some people consider to be a, a, a kind of a weird corollary of this is what happens if we look at just the probability that the random variable is equal to a value? Well then you could think of that being equal to a value as being 
between the value and itself. <laughs> and, and so this would be, our calculation would be we would integrate from, uh, from the value A to itself. And of course, when you do that, you're gonna get zero. So a kind of a, a byproduct of this development of the material this way is that uh, the probability when you have a continuous random variable, the probability that the random variable is equal to a certain value is gonna be zero. Uh, so we don't really talk about probabilities being equal to values um, when we, with, in the continuous case, we, we talk about probabilities of the random variable being between certain values or in an interval of values. Okay, so that's the probability density function. There's another important function that we're going to talk about through the rest of the course and through the rest of your statistical career, and that's called the cumulative distribution function, so the CDF. So the PDF was the probability density function. The CDF is the cumulative distribution function, and sometimes I use, uh, I leave off the word cumulative and just write this as the distribution function. So the definition of the distribution function or the CDF, the cumulative distribution function, is this cap F right here. Cap F sub, sub cap X evaluated at some, some value X is just the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to X. So that's the definition of the cumulative distribution function or the CDF is a probability. It's defined to be a probability. And evaluated at X, it's the probability that the random var variable is less than or equal to X. So I have some, some, some picture that looks like this. And generally what that would be is the integral from minus infinity to X of the density function. Now, I want to first, uh, there's, uh, you know, bear with me through the next few slides because I've got some notation that I want to kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, be, be specific on. But before I do that, I want to actually focus on this minus infinity as the lower limit of integration. Generally, that's what it is. The random variable that I have shown, or the, the graph that I have shown here, is for, uh, is defined for positive values of cap X, not, not negative values of, of cap X. But there's no reason, though, that the random variable has, you know, can't take negative values. It's just in this particular example that I have shown, uh, I just have it written as um, a random variable that does not take on negative values. So in the example that I have shown, in the picture that I have shown, the negative infinity would actually be replaced with a, with a zero. But again, generally speaking, there's no reason for random variables not to be uh, able to have some negative values, and we're going to see plenty of random variables that can have negative or positive values. Um, but again, uh, in the picture that I have shown, I'm just looking at a uh, one that has only only non-negative values. So generally speaking, the density, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, distribution function is defined to be this probability that the random variable is less than or equal to x. The density function evaluated at x is the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to x. And it's generally the integral from minus infinity to x of the density function. So now, um, let's look at this value x that I have highlighted in red now. That's generally just kind of a placeholder value for the function. Uh, when you write functions, you, you, you put in some kind of placeholder value. And I have an x here, uh, but there's no reason, reason it could be an x. I could have maybe like a z here. I, I put a z here or something like that. That's fine. And then, and then my integral would be from minus infinity to z of uh, the density function. So now let's focus on the density function because uh, I, I want to show you uh, through the next few slides, I want to make an observation here. So let's, let's look at an example from uh, just calculus one or basic calculus example. Let's say that you had an integral from one to five of three x squared plus six x uh, dx. So you're integrating with respect to x and, and the integrand is three x squared plus six x. And so we would go through this process by finding an antiderivative of 3x squared plus 6x. So the, 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 the most easy antiderivative of that would be x cubed plus 3x squared. Plug in a 5, see what you get. Subtract off what you get when you plug in a 1. And if I did the arithmetic right, I got a 196. Okay, so now uh, let's look at that integral again, the bo bottom left integral. That's, I've got x as the, as the variable that I'm, I'm integrating with respect to, but there's no reason that, should, that has to be an x. I could do a, a t here. What if I had a 3t squared plus 6t dt? Well, the process is going to be exactly the same. I'm just going to integrate with respect to t. I get a t cubed plus 3t squared. That's the simplest antiderivative. Plug in a 5, see what you get, subtract off what you get 
when you plug in a one, I get 196 again. So again, the integral there is not going to depend on uh, you know, the, 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 limit, the, the variable that you're integrating with respect to. And so I got a cap X here and I've made, um, I kind of, you know, made a, a, a point in the last videos about being careful with, you know, uh, as a teacher, I want to be careful with the notation because it can get very confusing. But what you're most likely to see this is not a, a cap X in the, in the, uh, as the variable that you're going to be integrating with respect to, but a lowercase x. But again, based on the last few slides, it doesn't matter. This is going to be independent of whatever the, the variable is that you're, that you're using as your, in, in your integrand and that you're integrating with respect to. The, the, uh, the outcome will, be, will, will not depend on what that variable is. And so oftentimes uh, you'll see maybe the, dens uh, the distribution function defined this way. Okay, so now let's go back to this z and let's, let's change that back to an x. So oftentimes I might see uh, a statement that looks like this or a, 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 an expression that looks like this. Now this is kind of, uh, you know, from a, from a, uh, a term, or notation standpoint, this is not very good notation because you're using x as both a limit of integration and you're using x as the variable that you're integrating with respect to. Uh, and so that's not really a good, a good notation to use. And, and so instead of using something like this, again, we just, the same observations I've been making, the, the outcome here is, is it, we could change the, the, the variable that you're integrating with respect to. So I change the x's in the, in the integrand to r's and I'm integrating with respect to r. And I, just like changing x's to t's from before. I could have used t's. I could have an f of t dt here and integrate from minus infinity to x of f of t dt or f of u du. That's all of those are, uh, I could use all of those. It's just kind of improper notation to use x as both the limit of integration and the variable that you're uh, integrating with respect to. Okay, another fact that I want to point out is, and I'm just going to kind of point you back to uh, uh, your first calculus class, there were some fundamental theorems of calculus, and one of those fundamental theorems of calculus says that uh, if you're defining the function as um, in, in this case, capital F as an integral of the lower of the lowercase uh, uh, f, then uh, integral means you're taking antiderivative. So if you take a derivative of both sides, uh, in this case, you're going to get that the derivative of cap f would be equal to little f. Now cap f is the is the distribution function. So what I'm saying here is you take the derivative of the distribution function and you actually get the density function. So that's an important fact. I'll come back to that in just a second. Okay, another uh, function that I want to discuss is the survival function. It's defined in a very similar way as the distribution function. It's defined as the probability. It's defined as a probability. It's the probability of the event that the random variable is greater than uh, it, x, whatever that placeholder value is on, on the, uh, on the uh, uh, notation there. And so we're looking at, uh, an, as a probability then, we convert that to an area. So it's an area uh, under the curve from x to infinity, and we would evaluate that by uh, evaluating the integral from x to infinity of the density function. Uh, as I said before, we could change the, uh, uh, the cap f to some other uh, variable like a z, uh, and so this will be an integral from x to infinity of like an f of z dz. A note here is that if you add the uh, distribution function and the survival functions together, it's one. It's not really difficult to see that because they're both defined, the density, I'm sorry, the distribution and the survival functions are both defined to be uh, uh, probabilities. And not only that, but they're probabilities of complementary events. And so when you add up those probabilities, you'll get one. Okay, so finally, the, we, we talked about this fact before, that if you take the derivative of the, dis, uh, the distribution function, you'll get the density function. But now, uh, what's, let's relate that to the survival function also. So uh, after the note there, if I, I can rewrite the note and solve for the distribution function, and the distribution function would be 1 minus the survival function. And so now, in the fact, I'm taking the derivative of the distribution function, cap F. And so now, if I take the derivative of 1 minus... The, the survival function, well, the derivative of one is zero, and so I end up with just a zero minus or just the negative of the derivative of the uh, survival function. And so that's gonna be uh, another part of our fact here. So with continuous random variables, we're gonna have these three functions, uh, the density function, the uh, distribution function, and the survival function, and they're related this way. 
So if I give you any one of these, uh, or this is one relation, I should say. If I give you any one of these, you should be able to give me the other two. And so let's talk about that for just a second in the next few slides. For instance, if I gave you, if you're given the density function, then the distribution function, we talked about that, it's, it's this probability that the random variable is less than or equal to x. So that's the integral from minus infinity to x of the density function. Uh, and then the survival function is the probability that the random variable is greater than x, so it's the probability, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's the integral from x to infinity of the density function. So that's how you would get distribution function, the distribution function, or the survival function from the density function. On the other hand, if you were given the distribution function, so in that middle paragraph there, second to last paragraph, if you're given the cumulative distribution function, then the survival function is just one minus that, and the density function is the derivative of the uh, distribution function. And finally, if you're given the survival function, then the distribution function is one minus the survival function. Again, those, those were just the, the, the distribution and survival functions are probabilities of complementary events. And so the distribution function is one minus the uh, survival function. And then uh, the, the density, the probability density function is the negative of the derivative of the survival function. Okay, so that does it for functions. Now let's talk about moments for a second. In the discrete, uh, in the discrete case, we had uh, a probability mass function. And it, with a discrete random variable, you can just list out the values of the, uh, of the random variable, and there's some probabilities that go along with those values. And when we're talking about moments or expected values, the, the expected value of the random variable, remember it was a sum product. So the first thing we did is we took the product of uh, uh, each value in the support, you take its value times its corresponding uh, point mass, and then you'd add all those up, and that's what the expected value is of the random variable, sum product. And that was called the first moment of the random variable. And then we had second moments, and then and, and just generalizing it instead of taking the random variable, uh, the values of the random variable times their associated probabilities, you take the square of the random variable and multiply that times its associated probability and then add them all up. So that was the second moment. And you could generalize it to the kth moment just by taking the values in the support of the random variable and raising them to the kth power. Okay, so now we're going to do something similar in the continuous case. Uh, so in the continuous case, instead of a probability mass function, we have a PDF, a probability density function. So now we're going to kind of go through the same process, though. Instead of taking the value of the random variable times its probability mass function, we're going to take the value uh, of a random variable times its probability density function. So anytime you have some sort of process that you're going through, this is kind of a general statement going forward. Anytime you have a discrete random variable and you go through some sort of process to calculate something that uses the probability mass function, when you, when you look at the similar process in the continuous case, wherever you were using a probability mass function, just now use a probability density function. And so this is, so now I have an X times the PDF. And instead of summing them up in the discrete case, you sum it up in the, in the continuous case, you integrate. And of course you integrate over the, 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 uh, all the values. So generally you'd integrate from minus infinity to infinity and an X times the density function is the integrand and that's what the expected value of the random variable is defined to be. Okay, this is also again called the first raw moment of the random variable, and we can easily generalize this to kth raw moments by taking x and raising it to the kth power. So uh, that would be the kth raw moment. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to do an example, a specific example of uh, calculating these functions and moments. I'll see you, see you then.